All right, everyone, we just finished going over our test. It's been a while since we've actually done anything new here. Uh, last week, I think it was. Um, the last thing that we did that was new was Mickelson's experiment that was used to determine the speed of light. The idea behind Mickelson's experiment, you hopefully remember, is you had this, this rotating, eight-sided rotating mirror on a hill that was 35 kilometers away from the light source. When light bounced off of this rotating eight-sided mirror, a lot of times that light would bounce off in a seemingly random direction and not be detected by the observer. When the rotating mirror was rotating at the right frequency, at just the right frequency, then the angles were such that the light could bounce off of that mirror and get detected by the observer. It was back on the same hill that we, the light started at. That allowed us, using the frequency of the rotating mirror, okay, whenever we observe the light, whenever the observer observes the light, we take the measurement of the frequency of the rotating mirror, use that frequency to determine a period of the rotating mirror, use that period to determine a time that it took the light to get from one hill to the other, along with the distance the light traveled in order to get the speed of light. Okay, this is an experiment that Nicholson performed that got us a fairly close value to the currently accepted value for the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Now, we have to solve questions on this. And most times on a diploma exam, there is a question on this. Since this appeared in the curriculum three or four years ago, I believe there's been one exam, one exam that has not had a question on this. Every other exam has. That's good news. Because these are very recipe-based questions. A lot of questions we have to think really, really hard about. And that's good, because that expands our mind and makes us smarter. But every once in a while, it's nice to have a question that's just a recipe, that we just have to do the same thing every time and be pretty sure we're going to get the right answer. This is that question. I want to take a look at question number three here. And I want to follow the recipe to do that. Question number three says, an eight-sided mirror, set of mirrors, similar to Mickelson's rotating with a frequency of 500 hertz, is located 36 centimeters away from a fixed mirror. If the returning light is observed in the system, at what speed is the light traveling? So we've got our, our rotating mirror right here. OK, we've got our light source right here. Let's make it yellow to be a light source there. Okay, that light source, it produces light. It reflects off of one side of the mirror. It comes down here. It bounces off of this mirror down here on this other hill 35 kilometers away. It bounces back here. And now, if this mirror isn't rotating at the right frequency, then it's going to go in some kind of seemingly random direction. It is not going to be observed over here by this observer. Can you tell what this is? It's an eye, yes. And, I, and you guys thought I wasn't a very good artist, right? There. That makes it better. If it's rotating at the right frequency, then this angle will be right. And this angle will be right for the light to de get detected by this observer over here. Okay, the frequency at which it is detected, we're told here, is 500 hertz. We're also given the distance here, 36 kilometers from the rotating mirror to the plane mirror, and we want to find the speed. So what's the formula? What's the recipe that we use to get this? Well, as I said in the podcast the day that I wasn't here, there are two equations that you're always going to use to solve these problems. The first one, V equals D over T. Always. The second one, T is equal to 1 over F. Always. Now, we're looking for V. We're looking for the speed of light. In order to get the speed of light, we need the distance, which we have. It's 72,000 meters. First of all, convert that to meters. Second of all, why did I double it? Because it goes there and back, right? If they give you the return distance already, great, don't double it. If they give you the one-way distance like there, up here, then make sure you double it. It always works out this way. Whenever we're trying to find something, either V or F or whatever, we need to have a time. And the time that we're able to find is never the time that we actually need. Okay, I need little t here. I need the total time that it takes for the light to go back from here to here and then back to here again. 
I need that total time. I don't know what that total time is. I never will. Okay, the time that I'm able to find is never the time that I want. That's okay, because we can get it. Let's go over to the other equation here. Big T, that's the time, by the way, for one revolution of my mirror. It's equal to 1 over the frequency, and the frequency is 500 hertz. If we say 1 over 500, that gives us uh, 2.0 times 10 to the negative 4, 10 to the negative 4 seconds. That's the time for one revolution. Now, how long did it take the light to go down and back again? Not the time for one revolution. This mirror didn't have to make a whole revolution to have the angles right. The mirror had to make one-eighth of a revolution to have the angles right. So we're going to take that time, we're going to divide it by eight. That's going to give us, what is that? 2.5 times 10 to the negative 5. Is that right? Somebody figure that out for me, please. 10 to the negative 4. No, I think it's 10 to the negative 5. Oh, this is, okay, okay. So 2.0 times 10 to the negative 3 for big T. This would be 2.0 times 10 to the negative 4 for little t. The little t, the time for one-eighth of a revolution. Let's plug that into here. 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4 seconds. And we get 2.88 times 10 to the 8, which you can see is a really good speed, a really good measurement for the speed of light. 2.88 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Is that okay? We know we've got to use this equation and this equation every single time. Plug your numbers in. The first thing that you're going to get is time. It's either going to be big T or it's going to be little t. It is never the one you want. If you get big T, then divide it by 8 to get little t. If you get little t, then multiply it by 8 to get big T and then put it into the other equation. Okay? Remember, the time you want, you've got to get a different one. If you get big T, divide it. If you get little t, then multiply it, and then get what you can from the other equation. Got it, guys? Okay, we'll pick up there tomorrow. Have a good night, everyone.